Hello everyone. Yeah, I might do that a couple times this LP. Anyway, hey guys, this is Matt the Speedstar, aka the Game Rebel here, ready to run through the next part of Metroid Other M Redemption. So, yeah. Just gonna quickly bring this up here. This came from here, story. This is essentially just a recap of some of the recent things that have went on throughout the journey in the bottle ship. This comes up every time you load up the save file and just shows you that kind of stuff. I'm gonna keep those in, mainly because it's a little bit of a homage to my uh, previous LP, of course. Just a little bit. I mean, like, I'm still not too proud of it, but, you know, I'm not gonna forget about it. I mean, I put a link to the playlist for that one down in the description. I've got those as unlisted now, because, let's face it, you guys want to watch me not know what's going on and just be, like, silent 90% of the time? Yeah, I think not. Anyway, we got things to do and we got bugs all around. But now, cutscene time, so shh. He's dead. Someone or something attacked him. Get away from me! Miles! Enough! It was obvious that there was some pervasive danger throughout the facility. I didn't know what had brought Adam here, but I did know that cooperation was imperative if we were to restore safety. Adam, listen to me. Clearly, this facility is in complete disorder. It might be too dangerous for your men to go alone. That's why I've... Look at that! They're coming out of the wall! All right, take on All right, first boss time. This is the Brug Mass. And Woo, that was close. This ain't good. Nothing's working. Listen up. Free guns authorized. Seven, I'm authorizing missile use. Okay, so that's one of the big, this is another one of the big criticisms the game has, but I'll get into that after this boss fight. You know, when I have time to actually explain things. But we got our missiles back. So you know what you need to do. Alright. First one to stun it. Oh! Concentrate fire in a single location and freeze that thing! And Sam, you attack the frozen spot. Oh, I should have uh, paid a little better attention. There we go. I usually take a chance to reload as soon as I get it. So, like before, missile that thing's eye. There we go. Just keep that up. Don't worry about these guys, they ain't gonna die. Just focus on yourself. That was close. I am getting some distance. Alright. Now just either use your beam or quickest way to fight it. Missile. And that's that.
Samus. Looks like I'm gonna need to ask for your cooperation on this mission, but I'm also gonna have to ask that you follow my commands. You don't move unless I say so, and you don't fire until I say so. Any objections, lady? The thumbs up sign had been used by the Galactic Federation for ages. Me? I was known for giving the thumbs down during briefing. I had my reasons, though. Commander Adam Malkovich was normally cool and not one to joke around. But he would end all of his mission briefings by saying, Any objections, lady? He was joking, but others weren't. At the time, I felt surrounded by people who treated me like a child, or used kid gloves because I was a woman. And yet with Adam, I was grateful for the nod. My past has left me with an uneasy soul, and as a result, it touched me on some level that Adam would acknowledge that past by calling me something delicate, like Lady. And I knew more than anyone that every word from Adam was deliberate. My thumbs down was a twofold response. A sign of derision at being called a lady, and a signal of my complete understanding of the mission orders. The other soldiers were always willing to support me with easy smiles despite the fact that I clearly had so much yet to learn. Among them was Anthony. In the face of his well-meaning behavior and that of the other soldiers, my response was to become increasingly bitter. I was a child, always with something to prove, a chip on my shoulder. And I was angry. I felt that if I let my guard down, I would easily be broken. And beyond that, I was scared. Even in the naivete of my youth, I could see in Adam's joking manner how close he felt to me. Adam knows my past, and he knows me better than anyone else. Confession time. Because I was so young when I lost both of my parents, there's no question I saw Adam as a father figure. When I rebelled against him, I knew I could get away with it. And his paternal compassion in the face of my rebellion reinforced the special bond I felt with him. I understood well that chances were slim that I would ever find anyone that understood me like Adam. And yet, when the time came, I still left his side. I was so young, young and naive. Exactly what transpired here on the battleship is still uncertain. Here's what we do know. The equipment we thought had been destroyed is operational again. And we've seen casualties attributed to an unidentified and lethal creature. The situation is critical. We need to gather all the information we can, but priority one is to find any survivors and bring them to safety. Consider this site extremely dangerous. Be careful as you make your sweeps. And there's one problem. The wireless interference in this facility is all pervasive. Your comm systems are useless. As a result, communication channels will be limited to the facility's navigation booths. Well then, Lyle, investigate Sector 1, and show a little restraint with the explosives. Gotcha. Maurice, you cover Sector 2. Repair any equipment you come across. Affirmative. Anthony, you're Sector 3. I'll leave it to you to decide whether plasma guns are called for. All right. James, check out the control bridge. Our communication issues might be the result of electrical interference. Yes, sir. And KG. Run a complete sweep of the residential quarters and investigate any trace of survivors. Got it. Each of you is authorized to use a freeze gun. 
do not forget to check in regularly via navigation booths. And Samus, you go to the system management room. Do everything you can to get the electrical system back up and running. Looks like your comm system is still functional. Remember, everything you see will also appear on this screen. Regarding auxiliary weapons, the use of bombs has been authorized. As far as your other weapons go, we will continue to investigate and authorize use as we can. However, we currently have no plans to authorize the use of power bombs. As you know, they have the ability to spread a high temperature heat wave over a large area, impacting living things. Which is a nice way of saying they can vaporize humans instantly. You should be well aware of how dangerous power bombs are and how their devastation can't be obstructed with common materials. Once the mission in the system management room is complete, I need you to report back. I'll give you your next orders then. I want you all to be especially careful as you execute your missions. That's the end of the briefing. It was the first joint mission I'd been a part of since becoming a freelance bounty hunter. And of course, it was the first time since my Federation days that I was following the orders of a commanding officer. Having received mission orders from Adam, I felt confused and strangely exhilarated at the unexpected turn of events. I responded. Understood, Adam. No objections, of course. Okay. We're now in control again, and we have our bombs back, so we're essentially how we were before we met up with Adam. Now, as I'm heading down there, I am going to try and explain a little bit about uh, our lengthy cutscene of what went on. As well as another one of the big criticisms that people give this game. And that is Adam authorizing your weapons. Before I do that, however, I'm gonna take care of this. Blue dots on the map show location of items. Once you've uh, destroyed all the enemies in a room, if there's an item in the area, you'll get a little bit of a sound cue and you can look for it. You can also see it on the map. It will always be permanently registered to your map if you have cleared the room at least once. Because of this, there's no x-ray scope. In fact, here, I'll just quickly go to, uh, status. Now, you might not see it right now, but we essentially have, like, every single one of our abilities from Super Metroid, save for two. And that would be the x-ray scope and the spacer. The spacer, for an obvious reason because this is a 3D Metroid game and you automatically aim at an enemy so you don't have to like crouch or anything or have to shoot three beams just to kill something. And the X-ray scope because of how they're handling items in the game. So there's that. Other than that, you pretty much have everything else, including your wall jump, your shine spark, and pretty much everything else that you got uh, in Super Metroid. And missile tanks. They only give you one missile in this game. There are a total of 70 missile tanks to be found in the game for a max of 80. Ah, a little bit of a voice crack there. But there's also other items too. You have the energy parts and the excel charges, but you also have energy tanks. There's also one other item that has not been covered yet, and we will get to that eventually. Now, of course, if I was low on missiles and I didn't want to use concentration, I could just come here, but, uh, you know me. When I get the chance, I usually like to reload. Especially around this part. Um, I hope you guys can see okay. I did adjust the brightness a little bit, so I hope it's fine for you guys. For me, it's still stupid dark, however. But thankfully, I know where everything is. If I get hit, though, then, uh, yeah, it's because I didn't see an enemy. All right. Now, the one main, one of the main criticisms this game had was the authorization of your weapons, and a lot of people didn't really like that because Adam authorized them at sort of un 
convenient times, sir. I probably worded that wrong, but you, you get the idea. It's not like you can just put up whatever, like, you, you can't just activate whatever you want as you please. And this is kind of a story, an in-story thing as to why it's like that. Sorry, I just need to make sure I know where all the enemies are, because I know there's still some guys. Never mind, I got them all. Okay. So, for those who were watching the cutscene closely and listening in on everything, I'm gonna just get this energy tank real quick. Energy tanks usually are forced in this game, however. Like, most of the items you can get are optional, but energy tanks. Most of them, or I think at least this one, they're required because of uh, later stuff in the game that can kind of take a toll on your energy tanks. Okay, let me just bomb this real quick and I'll continue on. Oh boy. I know this part and I don't like it. Because we have Rios and we have these uh, pulsing flesh nests that spawn them. And I do not like these things. Really don't. Get a lock on. Missile. Missile. As soon as I get the chance, I'm gonna shoot these things as quick as I can. There. Now we can actually do stuff. So again, with the authorization thing. As Adam said, he will authorize the weapons as you continue through the bottle ship, depending on what the situation calls for. And you have to remember, Adam is able to see what you see. So essentially, just... You go in here, and basically what you see, Adam will see as well. So he has to study the situation, and then he determines what weapon he will allow you to have. At times, this may seem a little bit, uh, how I put it. Well, let's just say, sometimes his judgment is a little off. But some people have kind of taken this a little bit out of proportion, and I'm not necessarily defending it, I'm just explaining it. But there's also the fact that you have to remember, because Adam has a platoon of Galactic Federation soldiers here, this is technically their mission, and Samus, if she wasn't, if Adam didn't ask her to stay, she would kind of be considered a threat or a meddler. So, and if she interferes with Galactic Federation business, that makes her an enemy, and... Any enemy of the Galactic Federation has to be destroyed as quickly as possible. And we all know how much of a threat Samus can be. I mean, remember, she's the one who can kill the Metroids. She is the one who laid the space pirates to waste. And she's done a lot, so she's got a reputation behind her. So, yeah, if she was to rebel, she would be considered a threat and would have to be taken down as soon as possible. Now, I went back that way because, uh, you know, there was a missile tank right there, and I want to try and get as many of the items as early as I am able to. Now, down here, if I remember right, I believe over here... Oh, wait, no, I don't think that's it, but sort of a tell. Yeah, I was right here. Oh, yeah, you also have your spring ball. I like that they actually start with it, because to be honest, getting the spring ball in the Super Metroid and other Metroid games was actually pretty... Well, I know for Super Metroid, it was pretty infuriating, because uh, it was hard to do unless you had the space jump. Okay, I think I trailed off topic again. Oh yeah, um, I wanted to then talk about the, uh, cutscene. 
I don't really have anything to say about it, because everything explains itself. It doesn't go too much into Samus' past, yes, but it does explain a bit about what she was like during her youth and during her time in the Galactic Federation. Oh, I hate those things. I hated them in the other Metroid games. I hate them here. I probably would just use a missile at this point, but uh, I don't normally use missiles all that much unless I'm, like, either against a tough enemy or using it for uh, getting around. Although I probably should use them a little more, but then again, I only have, like, 13. Okay. But yeah, I don't really have much else to say about... Uh, that other cut see oh boy these guys I don't know a lot of the enemy names the ones I really know more of are the bosses those are the only ones I really bothered to look up the names for there finally got a chance to use overblast or you know I could just use a missile missiles right now are essentially your strongest weapon and since you can reload all of them in a matter of seconds, that's one of the reasons why they're why you don't get as many as you would in other Metroid games. Because, you know, you tend to use a lot of missiles in those games. But, uh... I think I lost my train of thought again. Dang it. Alright. Now I need to figure out how I get up here again, because I don't necessarily... Oh, right. I think I remember. I need to look up and blow this up. Oh yeah, that actually... I thought that... Oh! I are smart. I are definitely smart. Alright, let's quickly, uh get back up here because uh, now I actually have to use the elevator because everything else got uh, taken down. I can't use those platforms and I need to activate that one because there's an item down there. There's also another item in there. That yellow item there over here, if I can... Okay, I can't really look at it in first person but that is an Excel charge and we ain't getting that one for some time. But for Excel charges, they decrease the amount of time it takes to charge up whatever you're using. For right now, it's just our charge beam, but we do have other things that uh, use the charge function. Power bombs would be one of them, but we can't use those at all until end game, pretty much, because remember what Adam said. This is essentially a rescue mission. And, you know, if there's any survivors... We don't want them vaporized by a power bomb, do we? Anyway, I think I've gone on long enough here. It's actually nice and bright in here now, so I can see. And we do have to save. Again, I I don't like the whole force save thing. I wish there was an option to... Like, an option comes up where it would ask you to save, but you still get, like, the uh, restoration and what you would normally get. Which is map data. Normally you get map... Bleh, you get map data here. Yeah, you normally get map data here the first time you enter a navigation booth. But I still think that uh, the whole thing about a force save kind of not really necessary. That's just a personal thought, however. But you know what? It's not too big an issue. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Anyway, this has been going on for 25 minutes at this point. I am going to stop here. So, next time on Metroid Other M Redemption, let's go see what we need to do next. That's all I really got. At least got a good amount of missiles, though. That's, uh, nice. Means we're making some decent progress. So, 
Until next time, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you wish to follow along with this and my other Let's Plays, please consider subscribing. If any concerns come up, I'll let you guys know my Twitter and additional info in the lower left box in the video and down in the description below. This has been Matt the Speed Star, aka The Game Rebel, and I will see you guys next time when we run through the next part of Metroid Other Rebels.